Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, uh, here with another That's franchise re-review. Um, could you just a second, second, please, sorry. Sorry I had to turn off my TV. I'm actually having a Halloween marathon right now with all the films uh, of the original franchise, not count the two Rob Zombie remakes. But, uh, so I figured I'd do a franchise re-review for them, since I've been watching the hell out of all of them. And see if my thoughts or mine has changed any or at all, based upon my rewatch of the films. But just to jump into them, I have the original Halloween on VHS. Um, just to say one extra thing here, I am going to get the box set with all the films in it, the Blu-ray collection of them. So after I get those, I don't know, I'll probably still keep the VHS tape versions I got just for sentimental value. Because uh, I like collecting VHS tapes still because I still have VCR. I'm one of the only... Uh, People has got freaking VCR that I know, <laughs> as well as a DVD player and a Blu-ray player. <clears throat> so I'll probably still keep them. Just to jump into Halloween, this movie needs no introduction to horror fans or any movie fan in general, really. It's four stars out of four, directed by John Carpenter. It's John Carpenter's masterpiece. It stars Jamie Lee Curtis giving a good performance. Uh, uh, Donald Pleasance giving a good performance, although he doesn't get to do as much in this one. Um, I mean, he does a lot in this one. It's mostly just like searching for Michael Myers. I wish he would have got to do a little bit more um, because he's the better actor between the two, in my opinion, between him and Jamie Lee Curtis um, out of this film, anyway. And I like his character better. I always found him more interesting than Jamie Lee Curtis's character, even though I really like Jamie Lee Curtis's character, too. Um, but I always found Donald Pleasant's character more interesting. Someone who just keeps hunting the killer down is just more interesting to me. But, uh, but y'all yeah, on all, four-star film, Michael Myers, great character. He breaks out of the nut house after killing his sister when he was a child. Um, he's got a really cool William Shatner spray-painted white mask that he wears that looks really awesome. Uh, just the stock and suspense scenes in this, like just Michael Myers following, uh, like the little boy uh, at, at, at the school, just like walking on the other side of the gate and following him. Uh, Tommy Doyle is the character's name. Uh, scenes like that are great. Just like Michael Myers popping up random places where you don't expect him just to pop up at. Those are all great. And at the end of it, when uh, Donald Pleasant shows up and guns him down, he falls off the balcony, and then he, and, uh, Donald Pleasant looks down there, and uh, Michael Myers' body's like disappeared. Uh, and you just get that epic, uh, you know, Halloween theme done by John Carpenter. It's a great ending. This film, really, I sh as far as horror films go, a movie like A Nightmare on Elm Street, I feel like, needed a sequel because I feel like you can do more with a. Uh, Sorry, you could do more with the character of Freddy with the whole exploration of dreams and stuff. I feel like a franchise like that needs sequels. Friday the 13th, they didn't really need a sequel, but they fixed it by making one with a completely different killer in the, the style of Jason Voorhees. So that worked for that. But as for this film, this film never needed a sequel. In my opinion, it ended perfectly. It never really needed a sequel. And if you did want to do a sequel to it, I really think that you should have, as much as I like Jamie Lee Curtis's character, I really think that you should have dropped her character for the sequels and just set the film at another random different time. It didn't even have, uh, it could have, it could have been on the same night. It could have been on the same night like Halloween 2 was. But I would have preferred not bringing in the whole sister thing that kind of put the series in a, a chokehold for the rest of the sequels. I would have preferred not having the whole sister thing going on for all the relative and sister thing going on for all the films. I would have preferred not to have that. Instead, I would have probably liked it better if Halloween 2 would have just involved Michael Myers randomly going after some other random person that he just happened to just pick out at random for you know, one reason or another. Maybe he's just interested in him, or maybe he, I don't know, just wants to study him and follow him around for some reason, and just bring back Donald Pleasant's character and let him be chasing Michael Myers down again. I would have just preferred that, really, honestly. But uh, with that being said, I love the cover to this box here with the pumpkin and the knife. This is a great film. Highly recommended. You should definitely check it out. Um, now on Halloween 2. Halloween 2, once again, is, a, is a, pretty much another classic. Yes, I would have preferred they went to a different direction, but what we got is still great. The last time I did a review for this film, I believe I gave it three and a half stars. I just want to, and I, I believe I said part four was my favorite, even though I said that part two is probably a better film. I like to almost erase all that. Uh, after watching the films again, this one is easily my favorite sequel. 
just with the really high production values that it seems to have. The rest of the films just felt less uh, professionally made to me than this one. Even even part four felt, felt for less professionally made than this one, just to look at part four compared to this one. This is definitely a this is a four star film to me now instead of a three and a half. I just find it really entertaining. I think I was letting the, the nostalgia of part how good part four was when I was a kid like uh, interrupt my viewing pleasure of this film. But yeah, this is a, this is a four star film just like part one. Although it's not as good as part one, it's got more action in it and some more over the top. Um, slasher moments that uh, don't feel like they should be in the Halloween film and would feel more comfortable in the Friday the 13th film. But Michael Myers stopping at a hospital is a great location. You have Jamie Lee Curtis back, which is really cool, even though I don't think it absolutely needed her. But she, it's cool that she's back. You got Donald Pleasant's back again. That's another cool thing. Set in the same night. That's three cool things. Um, and the hospital location is great. Uh, Michael Myers killing people with a scalpel is great. When he stabs a nurse in the back and lifts her up with one hand, in, that's awesome. At the end of it, when uh, Lori, uh, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, shoots Michael Myers in both his eyes, and he's like bleeding on his mask. That's awesome. And the big epic ending where Donald Pleasance blows Michael Myers and himself up, and Michael Myers walks out like on fire, like the fucking Terminator, and then falls down. That's awesome. That alone right there should have made me give this movie four stars before. But I'm a, I was a dumb shit in my previous review, and uh, hopefully uh, my dumb shitness is gone because I've seen the movie for what it is, which is a, it's a it's a really good sequel. It's four stars. It's not as, still not as good as the first one. It lacks some of the more intelligent suspense of the first one. It goes for more horror movie slashers uh, tropes, which wouldn't be bad in, in another film. But in uh, Halloween, it just feels a little tacky. It feels like it should have been played. Uh, I don't know. It should have been played. It should have been done or put together a little bit more professionally, uh, like the first film, than what it is here. Like so the suspense and stuff is just not as professional as it was in the first film. I attribute that to, the, to probably the lack of John Carpenter directing. But I don't think even if John Carpenter directed this movie, it would have been as good as the first one. But I think it would have been better. But, yeah, as far as it goes, four-star film. Picks up on the same night. Michael Myers goes to a hospital where Laurie Strode's at. Got Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasant's back. One, one the, the big thing about the movie I don't like is you find out Jamie Lee Curtis is Michael Myers' sister. You didn't need that. You still don't need that. Um, but I love the ending with the explosion with Donald Pleasant's blowing himself up taking Michael Myers out, and I love uh, the chase with, uh, with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis being all dope, drugged up and her, like, paralyzed, basically, where she's crawling, and, you, and she has even less a chance of getting away from Michael Myers, so it makes the chase even more exciting. Another thing I, I, that is kind of stupid is there's, like, this character of Jimmy who, like, he works at the hospital as, like, a crush on Jamie Lee Curtis, and he just, like, slips on some blood and falls down and knocks his stuff out, and then later on, you see him again, he just, like, passes out in the car. And you never see him after that. There's no way that character died. Uh, his slip on the blood and fall to the ground when he hit his head did not look anywhere near hard enough for him to be dead from that to me. So it's like, what the fuck happened to this guy? I know there's an extended scene where he's in the hospital, I mean, where he's in the ambulance with Jamie Lee Curtis. That should have been left in. That would make much more sense. That's one other little weakness of the movie. But because his character is not that memorable and doesn't really do shit, uh, it doesn't really matter. So all in all, four stars, great film. Or, 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 or really good film, I mean, check it out. Almost makes it to greatness like the first one. Or excellency like the first one. It's really close. Halloween 3, which was given to me, which does not have a box, but I got it for free. Um, I hate this movie. This is one of the shittiest of the series. I know somebody's going to say, well, I mean, my, you can just go back and watch my original review for this, which hasn't changed at all. I mean, even my review for Halloween 1 has not changed either. It's still four stars. Halloween 2 has changed somewhat. My review has, but only in the difference that I appreciate the film more after watching it again and can see it as a four-star film now, which is what it really is, in my opinion. So my review for that has only changed slightly. <clears throat> that I appreciate the film more, and I can see the qualities, of, the better qualities that the film has now. I can see them easier. But Halloween 3 is still shit, in my opinion. It was shit when I watched it before. It's shit now. My review for this film has not changed. Uh, the whole mask thing and sacrificing kids on Halloween, that's cool. But the, Tom Atkins, I believe, is the star of this movie. I like Tom Atkins, but his character is just like a womanizing asshole in the movie. Or like a womanizer in the movie, which I don't care for, really. Um, and just the other characters and this whole... And the, the, the fucking, like, the girl that he hooks up with in the movie, how she just, like... 
out of nowhere turns out to be a robot. This is so stupid, it makes no sense. But yeah, all that crazy shit uh, could have been fun in a B-movie kind of way, but even in a B-movie kind of way, which is what I watched this film for, no, I do not hate this movie just because Michael Myers is not in it. I hate it because it sucks. Um, I do like the idea, though, that every Halloween film should have been a different story. I do like that. They should have kept doing that and just made a better movie in part four. In my opinion, the franchise pretty much ends in part two. Or, well, to me, the franchise ends in the, in the, in the ending to H2O. But as far as, like, as far as, the be well, this movie's much better than the H2O is what I'm trying to say. So I would have rather the franchise had ended here, but since we do have more sequels, to me, the franchise ends in H2O. But yeah, this sucks. I really do not look forward to watching this in my Halloween marathon, but I will anyway. It's a bucket. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I do like the ending, though, where you Tom Atkins, you don't know if he's called off the, uh, got the last, like, television channel to stop showing the commercial or whatever. It's, uh, that makes kids, like, die because they're wearing Colonel Cochran's Halloween masks or whatever, which have, like, uh, pieces of a uh, stone hinge. Uh, inside these little chips that have some kind of crazy magical power. All that kind of shit is kind of fun. But the film is just so stupid and just lackluster that, I mean, story-wise, that even the goofy shit in it just doesn't make up for it. Halloween 4, Return of Michael Myers. Much better movie than Halloween 3, in my opinion. Uh, my review for Halloween 3, my original review, has not changed at all. As far as this one, my review for this, it's not changed either, but it's now my third favorite film of the series after part one and two. I'd give it three and a half stars still, like my original review. Really good, really good sequel. <sighs> not like on the verge of greatness like part two was. Uh, but, uh, well, I'll, I'd say, I've said part two is really good, but you know what? Fuck it. I'd say part two is great as well. Just not, as, just not excellent like the first film. But this one I would put in the really good category. Um, really good, really entertaining. Uh, Daniel Harris does a great job uh, as uh, as Jamie Lloyd. Uh, Ellie Cornell, I like her to film a lot. She's really inter uh, she's cool. Trying to how she protects Jamie in the movie and everything. The film is not as professionally made as one and two. It doesn't look as professionally made. It's more of just like a standard slasher movie with Michael Myers in it. This is when the series is like pretty much fully embraced being just like a standard slasher movie with Michael Myers in it. It's pretty much what it is. It's just a huge slasher movie version of the first one, which is not a bad thing because it's a good slasher movie, a really good slasher movie. So that's what elevates this film above the rest of the sequels to come, is that it's a really good slasher film with cool kills by Michael Myers. Yes, some of the kills are more Jason-like. Pretty much some of them are rip-off fights, I can't. But uh, you do get a lot of cool ones out of the way, so fuck it. Um, so yeah, three and a half. Dawn Pleasant's coming back to life, though, is kind of silly. Even Michael Myers surviving his explosion is also really silly. No matter how supernatural he was, he would have been a skeleton by the end of part two. But it's a movie, so fuck it. You gotta, you gotta go with it. <clears throat> but uh, all in all, really good sequel. Though. Now we jump into shit, Bill. Halloween 5, my original review for this film has not changed at all, either. Um, this film sucks. It sucks, the big one. I hate this movie. I own it for completion's sake. I hate it. They kill off Ellie Cornell at the beginning of the movie. Horrible. Horrible choice. Uh, to be honest, they really, if they didn't kill Michael Myers off in part two, which they sh which he really should have died in that movie, since we've got other sequels anyway, we just just to go along with him, he should have been dead in the part four. I really would have liked it better if Jamie's character would have been the killer. And she didn't even have to be a killer like Michael. She could have been like a whole different style of killer. Just that, you know, it runs in the bloodline that she's crazy too now. But she could have been like a whole different type of killer though. She, she wouldn't even have to wear the same type of mask. She could have worn any kind of new unique design or whatever. But they were afraid, you know, that the franchise would see diminishing returns. Which it probably would have a little bit. But if they came up with a creative enough story, it could have kept the franchise going with Daniel Harris as the killer. They pussy out on that ending from the last movie. Daniel Harris is now the victim again. You see Michael Myers crying. Which I'm like, how can he be pure evil and crying at the same time? That makes no sense. Obviously, the character is not pure evil, at least according to the director of this movie. Uh, you get this character, Tina, in the movie who replaces Ellie Cornell, who dies in the movie. Her character, Rachel, dies like, right at the beginning of the movie. So you get this character, Tina. Worst character uh, in the entire film. I hate that character. She's so annoying. I think she was played by an actress named Wendy Kaplan. She is horrible. I, I clap when she died. Seriously, honestly, I went... 
Thank you, Michael Myers. <laughs> but uh, and even the ending of this film is downright stupid. Where Michael Myers is in a police station with his mask is still on. They did take his mask off and him in jail. And then just one, just one dude comes into the police station with a gun and wipes out the whole friggin' police station. And everybody there with a gun, not one person got a hit in on him. And him just an ordinary human. I'm like, who the fuck broke Michael Myers out of jail? Rambo? This movie sucks. Okay. Halloween 6. The Curse of Michael Myers. This is the theatrical version. Uh, it's a passable movie. It's an okay film. It's better than Part 5. It's okay, only because they're actually trying here. I didn't feel like they even tried Part 5, but they are trying here. But what kills this film is the story. It's butchered all the hell because of all the cuts they had to make to it because a couple teenagers complained in the test audience, which, eat that, teenagers, whoever you were that complained, uh, or test screening or whatever. But Paul Rudd's cool in this film. Donald Pleasance doesn't get enough to do, but he's really old. He's much older in this film, but I don't give a shit. Just don't let him do as much action, but let him in, be involved more in the story. Uh, Paul Rudd is cool in this film as the grown-up Tommy Doyle. That's one thing I loved about the film was you actually get continuity with the first film again, and Tommy Doyle's in the film. And uh, he's cool. How he beats the shit out of Michael Myers at the end with a lead pipe is awesome. But it's in like these quick MTV cuts, so it looks kind of shitty at the same time. He has some decent kills in the movie. They kill off Jamie Lloyd's character way too early in the film, uh, which sucked. She's now played by a different actress who I don't really know if she was good or bad for the role, but she gets killed off way too damn quickly. Um, I would have preferred Daniel Harris, but she gets killed off so quickly. It really doesn't matter. Uh, Paul Rudd is cool. He does great in the film. And the girl who plays like the new uh, relative of Michael Myers or whatever, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, is it on here? Irene Hagen, Marine Hagen, I believe that's how you say her name. I think that's who it is. Uh, she's fine. The, uh, the who the man in black from Part Five turns out to be though is a lame. Is lame. It's like some old dude. I'm supposed to believe this old fart took out the whole police station in Part Five. Screw that shit. He should have been like some ultimate badass guy or something. Maybe like some you know second you know that's like a video game. The man in black should be like a second boss before you know you get to Michael Myers. That's what I would have loved, like some second main badass guy who gets took out by Don, who gets took out by like Paul Rudd and then Michael Myers could get took out by Donald Pleasance. That would have been awesome. Because Donald Pleasance is pretty old in this film, and he deserves to kill Michael Myers finally. If Michael Myers is killed by any character, if not Jamie Lee Curtis, it, it's got to be Donald Pleasance. Sorry once again, I drank a lot of soda, <laughs> but uh, or a lot of Gatorade before I did this. So I keep burping. But uh, it would have to be Donald Pleasance. If not Donald Pleasance, I would settle for fucking Paul Rudd. Because his character is it's really it's one of the highlights of the film. With his crazy faces every time Michael Myers shows up. He's like... <laughs> just like does crazy face. It's, it's really entertaining. One of the highlights of the film, really. Um, the whole foreign thing, you don't really need. But eventually, you're going to have to delve into the origins of the characters more in a franchise. And... Eventually, you're going to have to explain why Michael Myers is so hard to kill. So, a magical cult with our, with a magical druid symbol. Could they have done better? Yes. Uh, I mean, just make it... It could have just been like a curse. It didn't need a cult or anything. It could have just been like a curse that one person has put on Michael Myers or something like that. Uh, that's it. Like, one guy who worships... Or even like three or four people who just happen to worship this uh, evil demon called Thorn or whatever put the curse on Michael Myers. That's it. You didn't need like a whole cult conspiracy or whatever. Uh, but, uh, but as far as it goes, it's an okay movie. But it's, uh, it's got decent kills. Michael Myers will execute the dude and his head blows up. It's more, once again, more of a Jason thing, but it's still entertaining. Uh, once again, it's got decent kills. Okay movie, but the story's butchered all the shit. I just don't get enough background on the cult because all the background on the cult was cut out of this damn thing. But as it is, it's it's an okay movie. Uh, oh, I almost, I almost got ready to jump in Halloween H2O before I forgot. I do have the producer's cut of this film on DVD-R. I have the producer's cut. Yes, I know it's included in the box set, which when I get the box set, I'll probably just get rid of my DVD-R copy. Um, but uh, for the producer's cut of Halloween 6, 
producer's cut is much better. It's a good movie. It's sort of like a passable to okay two stars, like I gave this movie in my original review. Uh, for Halloween 6, the producer's cut, I, I, I did a review for it before, so if you want me to go more in-depth, just watch my original review. I'd give it three stars. It's a good movie. By far, the third best film in the series uh, uh, after Halloween 1 and 2. No, wait, by far the fourth best film in the series. Sorry, the fourth. After Halloween 1 and 2. And after Halloween 1 being the greatest, Halloween 2 being, you know, second greatest, Halloween 4 being next, and then after Halloween 4 would be Halloween 6, The Curse of Monty Myers, which is a good movie. The producer's cut is good. You get more background on the cult, you get a film that feels more like a Halloween film, more of a traditional Halloween film, despite the introduction of the cult. Jamie gets to live longer and gets a more peaceful death, where she's pretty much killed in her sleep in the hospital room, but she's still sad, but the character had to be getting gotten rid of in order to advance the story with the new characters. Although, it would have been cool if she could, well, I, I would, I take that back, it would have been cool if she could, like, team up with Paul Rudd now. I'll be honest, I would have rather uh, Jamie Lloyd's character hooked up with Paul Rudd's character instead of the uh, Marina Hagen character or whatever. Yeah, I would have rather that, those two would have just been going out by the end of the film. I would have rather that happen. But uh, as far as it goes, no, she still gets a more peaceful dance, and she gets to be in the movie longer. Dawn Pleasance has more to do. Uh, you get a uh, ending that feels more full in the film. It's more of a full ending. But Dawn Pleasance getting the curse of Thorn passed on to him, where he's going to be Michael Myers' new guardian protector or whatever, or has to watch over him. Uh, it's a sadder ending for the character, but the Halloween films being horror films, um, it fits more with the dark tone of Halloween 6. Um... But sadly, you would have had to have brought Dawn Pleasance back in the sequel. But really, I mean, you wouldn't have absolutely had to. If you wanted to do a straight-up sequel to the producer's cut of this movie, you could just say that Dawn Pleasance's character just, like, um, took himself out, killed himself. You could go that way and say he killed himself so he wouldn't have to be Michael Myers' guardian. And then, uh, before he killed himself, he, like, told the whole story to, uh, to somebody else, to Paul Rudd's character, maybe. That, uh, that way he could stop Michael Myers. He could uh, do what Don Pleasant uh, didn't have time to do or whatever. You could do something like that, although him killing himself would be sad. But still, though, I don't see Don Pleasant's character ever protecting Michael Myers, no matter what kind of curse he has on him. But uh, yeah, for the producer's cut, it's, it's a good movie. It's not the best in the series, but it is fourth best. Uh, it's definitely recommended to watch. Much better than the theatrical. I don't, just just for the fact alone that it goes more into the story of the cult makes it better than the theatrical cut. Halloween H2O. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, theatrical version, is a passable movie. This is what we call an okay movie. It's just okay. It's not great. Uh, it's only worth watching for the ending for when Jamie Lee Curtis fights Michael Myers. The big confrontation. It's only worth watching for that. Donald Pleasant's character is missed. I don't like how they try to ignore every other film in the series, although if you want to connect it, you can. It's not a big stretch. It's a horror movie franchise. There's going to be plot holes even if they did connect them. So, if you want to connect them, you can. I mean, you can. Um, but for me, this is where the films stop. This story over right here. Um, I was at the end of this. Uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis chops Michael Myers' head off with an axe. That's the only thing you really need to see in this movie. The rest of the film feels too much like Dawson's Creek, and it has a lot of stock characters that don't amount to anything, and LL Cool J is useless in the movie. Um, but uh, the ending with Jamie Lee Curtis versus Michael Myers and all the cool shit where she stabs the shit out of him, and he falls like over a balcony or whatever or something like that, she just slices his head off with an axe because she knows he's not dead and she wants to finish him off. That's awesome. Uh, that, that, just that part alone makes this an okay movie. Worth watching for that alone. Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Myers stand off. It's an okay movie, but uh, regardless of the fact that the movie's not great and it's just okay, the film should have still stopped there because after that, Michael Myers is dead and gone, and that confrontation is the final thing we really needed to end this franchise on. Um, there really shouldn't have been any more sequels to the main story after that. In my opinion, if you wanted to remake it, you should have remade the first one after that, or done a, a prequel movie. But, uh, uh, then we jump into Halloween Resurrection. I hate this film. Bust around. Jamie Lee Curtis gets killed in the beginning of the film. Horrible. Um, Tyra Banks is useless in the film. Bust around does kung fu to defeat Michael Myers and he wins. Horrible. Horrible installment. This film does not exist in my opinion. It has a few okay kills. But other than that, this is the most useless film in the franchise. Uh, other than Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Because it's 
I would say it might be, it's a, little, it's a little bit more freshly made than Halloween 5, but I hate this film more than Halloween 5, just because it's more disgraceful. You get rid of Donald Pleasance, you get rid of Jamie Lee Curtis, you don't bring back Paul Rudd, his cool character, and all you got is Buster Rhymes as the new hero of the brand of this movie, doing Kung Fu to defeat Michael Myers. You disgrace! Uh, I don't have them over here because I'm only watching the films in the original series, but Halloween 1 and 2, Rob Zombie's films, as far as they go. Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 is three stars. Uh, oh, my original review for Halloween Resurrection hasn't changed. It's still shit, so if you want a more in-depth review on Halloween Resurrection, just watch my original review. My original review for Halloween 1 and 2, Rob Zombie's, film has not, Rob Zombie's films, has not changed either. So if you want a more in-depth review on those two, just watch my original reviews. But, uh... Halloween, Rob Zombie's remake, I'd give it three stars out of four. It's good, it's better than a lot of sequels. Um, it's more, uh, it's entertaining. Uh, it has a lot of stupid white trash shit in it, though. Michael Myers' origin story, even though the actor who plays Kid Michael Myers does a really good job. I don't like how it's a generic origin story of Michael Myers, just as like a typical serial killer who kills animals or whatever. But uh, I like the stuff that Smith's Grove, and I don't even mind Michael McDowell as Donald Pleasant's character. Donald Pleasant's is better, but I don't mind Michael McDowell as an actor, period. I don't mind him here. He's fine. He was a good replacement. Um, I mean, he was a good choice for the for a replacement actor because sadly, Donald Pleasant passed away. He couldn't play the part again. Even if he was around, he'd be too old. You know, or he'd probably be too old uh, to do the part. But uh, the girl who plays Jamie Lee Curtis's character is nowhere near as good as Jamie Lee Curtis, but she's fine for the movie. Uh, the characters in this one though are a little bit more annoying. The teenage characters are, which makes it a little hard for me to root for them when they get uh, to care about them before they get killed. But other than that, though, the film, the film is still entertaining. You got cool cameos by Ken Foray. Uh, well, not really cameos, but you got fun roles by Ken Foray who says, I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch. <laughs> got entertaining stuff like that. And I like the ending where Laurie Strode just, like, shoots Michael Myers in the face. Rob Zombie's Halloween, this film, did not need a sequel either. Uh, this film is not a great movie. It's nowhere near as good as the original. It's not as good as Halloween 2. Uh, it's not as good as Halloween 4. Uh, I would say it's probably a little bit better than Halloween 6, either version of Halloween 6, the producer's cut, or the theatrical cut. But the producer's cut of Halloween 6 is pretty much almost right on the same level as this film. This film is like a little, just a speck or a little bit better than the producer's cut of Halloween 6. <coughs> but uh, because this film didn't need to be made, doesn't need to exist, I prefer the producer's cut, honestly, anyway, of Halloween 6, that is. But as far as this film goes, it's good. At least Rob Zombie tried with the film. I can really try. This goes this goes under the category of remakes that are good but not great. Like the Evil Dead remake, the Fright Night remake, shit like those two. The film still has no reason to exist. The first film is excellent. Uh, this film is just good. And when you take an excellent movie and just make it good, uh, it's, it's still a downgrade no matter what. But all in all, the film uh, is good. Uh, if, you're not, if you don't watch it, though, you're not missing anything. But it, it didn't need a sequel. But we got one with uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, which sucks. If you thought the first one was bad, this is by far worse. <laughs> it doesn't even feel like a Halloween movie. And Michael Myers like stabs people like a million times a piece, which is cool sometimes, but he does it every kill. Every time he kills somebody, it's over and over, nonstop. And it's so annoying. It's horrible. <laughs> it's fucking annoying. Um, and the whole white horse thing it seems, just seems like a forceful way to bring Sherry Moon Zombie back into the movie, who I liked in the last Rob Zombie movie, but who I hate here because her character just has no reason to be here. And the whole like David Lynch style thing, I, Rob Zombie, I appreciate we're trying to do something different. That's cool. Thumbs up for at least trying. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's good. It still sucks. The white horse and Sherry Moon Zombie thing is stupid. Trying to do a David Lynch type style Halloween is stupid. It takes away from the film being like a Halloween film, or at least more like a Halloween film. The film is like so different than other Halloweens, it doesn't even hardly feel like a Halloween film. This film would have benefited from not even being associated with a Halloween film, and just having a totally different kill. Um, the whole thing about Lori seeing the same visions as Michael Myers is ridiculous. Uh, it would make sense for her probably to have a mental condition just like Michael Myers does because uh, she, she's related to him. So maybe her having hallucinations. Well, I mean, just because you're related to somebody who's crazy doesn't mean you're going to be crazy, but uh, I would buy that more that she had hallucinations as well, but not the same hallucinations, because that's still ridiculous, but maybe similar ones. But the, the fact that they're the exact same is just ridiculous. 
Um, also, the ending where Rob Zombie just tries to be as depressing as possible, just has every main character get killed. Michael dies, Dr. Loomis might as well be dead. Um, Laura Strode is dead. This is for the unrated cut. Uh, in the, the theatrical cut, uh, Laura Strode doesn't die. I'm guessing they re they tweaked the ending in the theatrical cut to have her wind up in the mental institution, which is even sadder. She might as well have died. At least she would have been at peace. But, uh... <laughs> As far as it goes, it just seems like Rob Zombie is going to be as depressing as possible. So, F you, Rob Zombie, and your overly depressing shit. I don't mind overly depressing movies, but here it just feels forced. It feels like Rob Zombie is trying to force it, where he's just like, Yeah, everybody dies, so excuse me while I write this amazing, uh, super depressing ending. Yeah, everybody dies, uh, uh Laura Stroh dies. She's went fucking insane. She dies too. I'm like, come on, Rob, man, you, you're better than this, Rob. What happened to Devil's Rejects? Man, you're better. <laughs> but this film sucks. This is, I don't know which is worse, this or Halloween 5 or Halloween Resurrection. These three are the worst. I would say this is worse than Halloween 5. At least with Halloween 5, I can get some, It's at least Halloween 5 is more old school than this film. It takes place in the original franchise, so it's a bit more fun to me. But, uh, yeah, I'll say this film, i say this film is much, this film is worse than Halloween 5. I'm not sure which one I hate more, this or Halloween Resurrection. Halloween Resurrection, you get bust of food, so that's one thing. But, uh, yeah, all in all, that wraps up my Halloween franchise, um, uh, re-review. So I'll see you guys again with whatever, review, whatever reviews I do next. Next will probably be the Batman franchise. So I'll see you guys again with those reviews.